Hi, welcome to my channel, The Overland Legend. I'm Alan. In this series, I'm rebuilding a 1955 Land Rover Series 1. And today is a very exciting day, I'm hoping. And today is a huge milestone for me. I'm and today is a really exciting, exciting day. It's something I've been looking forward to for ages, a huge milestone. After five years of rebuilding this Land Rover, today I'm hoping to drive it out of that garage where I pulled it into. Unfortunately not as a finished vehicle yet, but as a rolling chassis. If you see in the back, I've got uh, the tires, so I've got everything now and I'm going to start it up and drive it out. And uh, so yeah, let's hope that that goes well. Let's see. This chassis has been on axle stands for a couple of years now and today was the day it would finally stand on the ground on its own and propel itself. But there were still a few things that I had to get done to make this happen. All of them seemingly simple and easy but still with some surprises. The first surprise was when I came to put the shocks on. I came to find two of the bolt holes locked. One with an old bolt and another with sand or dirt. I must have overlooked these. So with a bit of persuasion I had them cleaned out and then fitted the new girling shocks which looked great. I also finally got a new original lock washer for the brake and clutch pedal shaft. My original one was broken and no longer usable. It's always nice to finish off these outstanding details that seem to linger on. The next important job was to put the brake fluid in and bleed the brakes. I was a bit nervous about this one because it would reveal if I had made and connected up the brakes pipes properly. First I greased the threads of all the bleed nipples with some red rubber grease. Then the plan was to open all the bleed nipples with drain tubes on and then fill the main reservoir and let the system gravity feed. I did this and waited patiently. But nothing seemed to happen. I had also lowered the rear of the chassis so that the master cylinder was angled upwards to avoid the dreaded airlock in the back of this old CB type master cylinder. I eventually started to see brake fluid coming out, the rear right cylinder, which was a relief. But I also started to see leaks at many of the joints. Most of them were not properly tight. Looks like I've managed to seal most of these fittings now. They don't seem to be leaking anymore. It is a bit difficult to know how much to tighten them. Uh, before you put any liquid in. So uh, I just, oh now that looks like they've seated better now so I think we should be all right. So I've topped up everything and now I'm just going to let it stand for everything's full there now. So I'm just going to let it stand for a couple of hours and then uh, I'll do a little bit more. 
Next step was fitting the prop shafts. These are the original ones that I had reconditioned and they have come out very nicely. Normally it's so tedious fitting the prop shafts and having to tighten the bolts but with a vehicle on axle stands and no body on top makes it so much easier. Then I popped on the hubcaps. Some of them were a bit too tight thanks to the excess zinc from the galvanizing. But after some cleaning they tapped on easily enough. I still had to fill the diffs with oil as I had not done this since reassembling the axles. This was also easier to do than normal without the bumper on uh, the front and the body on the back. The front was no problem, but the back was another surprise. It looks like uh, I'm going to have to take this diff out again. I just put the oil in and now, uh, you know, it's uh, a leak is not uncommon, but uh, you know, it shouldn't run out when you just put the oil in. So obviously this seal that I've got here is not working properly or I didn't do something right. I only find that out now. So anyway, something else to do. But I decided to leave that leak for another day and rather keep going to get this landy rolling. And so I got to fitting the new wheels. Earlier in the week I had fitted the general SAG radial 750-16 tires with tubes onto my already painted rims. Getting new rubber is one of the coolest things about owning a car and fitting the tires is one of the coolest things about a restoration. I had left this to the last minute until I really needed them and enjoyed every minute of fitting them and dropping the jack to let the landy stand on its own. Finally everything was done and the moment had come to take this landy on a drive. It's always a combination of excitement and nerves at this point. Excited if it works but nervous about what will go wrong. After the last two smoky black exhaust starts, I had changed the carburetor from the cheap Zenith copy to a brand new Weber. The difference was remarkable as the engine started up easily and ran perfectly with no black smoke at all. Amazing what a good quality carburetor will do. In the excitement of going for a drive, there were a few things we missed. <laughs> but it was nothing serious that a bolt and a nut couldn't sort out. Uh, 
And with that, we had movement. But still, some more loose bolts fell off. Oh, that old steering bracket's loose. Yeah, I know. I was careful of losing nuts. What? Careful you're drifting. <laughs> Bit of a circus here. <laughs> and then I was off. It was fantastic driving this vehicle that I had worked on for so long. Everything seemed to work as it should and was a huge relief. I even had brakes. Not the best, but a good start. We just took a short drive and when we got back another check of everything revealed that all was still in order. There was just one noisy tappet so I'll have to reset those to see if that will sort it out. Seeing this landy out of the garage and in the sunlight for the first time was very satisfying. I marveled at the idea of rebuilding this from scratch. 
I could get a little glimpse of what the finished product was going to look like and start to think about what it was going to be like having this vehicle on the road and driving it whenever I wanted to. After giving it a bit of a clean, I pulled it back into the garage. I am now looking forward to this last phase of restoration with the confidence and motivation to push on and get this legend back on the road permanently.